Go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to look at all the instances of the word repent in the book of John. <laughs> in the book of John. Yeah, so, as soon as we get through all the ones in the book of John, we'll be done. <laughs> Oh, well, if anybody knows anything about the book of John, they know that the word repent or repentance or any form thereof does not appear in the book of John because the book of John is not meant for those in rebellion. It's meant for those who are already believing. One right, of the first two books that we have people, when they get saved, okay, now read what two books? John and Romans, right? Yeah. John is what happened, you know, when Christ came. The believer says, okay, I've got saved. Now what's all this all about? What do I need to know? Uh, they're already in humble submission. And so they go to the book of John, and they learn the whole story. And then they say, okay, that's wonderful. Now, what's my side of it? That was what God did for me. That's what Christ did for me in the book of John. And, and now, what do I have to do? So we go to Romans to find out what happened in my heart. You know, we're all sinners. We, we all did wickedly. We're going down that spiral of Romans 1 sin, uh, just uh, going further and further down uh, from into rebellion. And then, and then we came out of that, we, we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and His provision, propitiation for our sins. And now that, I'm, now that I believed on His blood, I believed upon what He did for me on the cross, now what is it as a Christian that I'm supposed to be doing? You know, that's where, that's where you're, you're in the kingdom, that's, uh, you're, 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 part of, uh, you're part of God's people now. You're, you know, it, it goes through all of that stuff, this, the first stages, you know, baptism, what, it's, what it symbolizes, and all the way through Romans, it explains those things. And so, uh, so John, we'll just kind of hit one verse in John. And then uh, basically in John chapter 20, verse 31, But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you might have life through his name. So uh, if we're not going to spend a lot of time on John because, uh, you know, obviously we're studying repent and it's not there. Uh, and so repent is the humbling of your heart. And then, so that belief can come in. So you got you got repent in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then you have believe in the book of John. And so that's pretty neat in those Gospels. Uh, and so it was written for the believer, what actually happened, how did I get saved, how, how was it that, uh, how can I build my faith, how can I work out my salvation, see what happened in that instance. Because we know, of course, faith is internal through the Spirit. Uh, oftentimes we don't know how the Spirit works and moves. Uh, John chapter 3 explains how does the Spirit move. You know, uh, we don't know where it goes. We can tell what it does, but we can't tell how it does it. You know, it's like wind moving back and forth and everything. Uh, and it's kind of like the weatherman on, on, you know, the book of John is kind of like that weatherman who, who just kind of says, okay, here are the wind patterns. And, and oh, there's the big picture. You know, and, and I knew it was blowing on my house, and it blew my house away like Dorothy and the, and the Wizard of Oz. And, this went away. How did that happen? And the weatherman gets up there and says, here was the big storm, here was the eye of the storm, here was the tornadoes, and here was the alarm sirens, and, and this is why that siren didn't go off, and, and all these things. And so, oh, so that's how it all worked together. So when your house blew away, you didn't know how it happened, but it happened, you know. And, and the, the weatherman gets on there and explains it. That's kind of what the book John is. Uh, he's explaining to you what happened. Uh, and so... Uh, John chapter 20, verse 31, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, and believing ye might have life through his name. So we understand that repentance is the submission to hear what faith has to tell you. And, and so that's, a, that's what the book of John is for, the humble person ready to hear how that Jesus Christ lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And they're ready to hear the spiritual message. The other books are focused on the physical so that you can eventually humble your heart and believe the spiritual. And then John is written uh, in a spiritual aspect so that the believer who submitted himself can have understanding in the spiritual. That's why uh, the book of John has a lot of um, messages from Christ. Uh, you know, this is the prayer of Christ. You know, you're in the, you're in the flock, you're this, you're that, and here's, the, here's what I pray for God, you know, verse, uh, chapter 17, verse 5. Uh, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, which, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You know, if you tell, if you get that verse or, or that passage uh, to uh, an unbeliever, they're like, what in the world are you talking about? But if you give belief to a believer, it says, oh, okay, uh, God is glorified in Christ, and Christ, and then they start understanding the spiritual aspects. 
So, as you say in the book of John, just remember it's not written to unbelievers, it's written to believers to understand the spiritual side of things, uh, the humble heart. And that's why you don't see the, the word repent in the book of John. So we're going to go ahead and move on.